Welcome to the Mad Witch Cottage. First off, I kind of wanted to make a quick mention about these clicker lighters because when we first acquired a couple, I thought, oh, these are really good. And you can get refills for some of them. But then I thought, they are also plastic. Um, and during the course, sorry, you probably can't see what I'm doing because I've pulled the camera right down. I'm just lighting my candles on my altar. I don't do this every day. Um, but I felt as if while I was on my holes, I would like to. But I've run out of... Oops, look at that bit of ash floating. Um, I can't get this to light because often I can use this as a taper. Um, but yes, coming back to the, the, the clickers. Now it's not going to work and I don't. Oh, I might be able to. Oh, actually I can do it this way. Look, good start, girl. So I thought, how many things... Do I realise I've got a carbon footprint over? Because you use them every day. You use them every day and you don't think twice about it. You can't see all those candles in the background. Um, but anyway, well, they were lit until one of them fell out. Oh, me and candles. I've set light to my fire in the my hair in the past with them. Um, doing some magic you can't uh, leave me for two minutes anyway welcome to the mad witch cottage and today i'm doing uh, what i hope won't be a hugely long video but it was our wedding anniversary yesterday and we did go to glastonbury to the isle of avalon um we've been going there for years um there was a time when we'd go three times, maybe four a year. It was our sort of go-to place. And then when we got the caravan, which we had for a good seven years, we still went. We went from um, Dorset, where the caravan was, another lovely drive through the countryside. But um, over the years, uh, uh, you know, we, we haven't gone as much. Um, the prices in Glastonbury are not cheap. So if you're going to go, you kind of need to save. Um, I love supporting Glastonbury. I've always made a point of uh, purchasing and trying to support the small businesses. It is hard for them and I really do appreciate that. I think the energy is changing. I think it's got, um, it's got to, hasn't it? It's changed over the... 30 odd years that I've been going um, but there are some wonderful shops and, and wonderful vibes and I think the chalice well I didn't get to go at yesterday and I didn't get to go to the White Springs but I think um, there is a there is a lovely healing energy in, in Glastonbury anyway so uh, so we went yesterday and I bought a few things. I did try to do a little vlogging, but I'm really not a vlogger. So the vlogging that I did was us driving in the car to Glastonbury. The most minuscule seconds of the high street as I was walking down it. Us having lunch in the Crown, which was really exceptional. And that was it. So I decided that's, you know, that's ridiculous. Um, there are so many people who vlog Glastonbury and that's in the shop. So I, I don't think that I'm, you're missing out with me not vlogging. And it just doesn't feel right for me. So anyway, so um, I went with a massive list of books that I wanted to get. And interestingly enough, <laughs> I didn't buy any of them. <laughs> so... Uh, I've got a few things to show you. It's not a huge collection. I did get the beautiful creatures. I'd I'd had my eye on this for a while and I'd seen it before 
in the shop that I got it from and I can't remember the name of the shop I will try to link it below if I can remember um, and they had it on sale it was still more expensive than you can get it online I you know there's nothing I could it had already been opened and the majors had obviously been thumbed through she did check to, to that they were all there for me the box wasn't dinged that happened when my husband was carrying the paper bag that it was in amongst other things and it got dropped so it, fair play it, it wasn't dinged it was it just however this isn't a box that I would use anyway because if you I don't like my cards being split like that anyway so but just so you've got something visual to look at while I was talking um we, I, I do want to quickly go through these cards but um so let's move on to what I did purchase so my first purchase was actually this little chappy well little girl I think she is or oh, it could be a little boy I, I'm not I'm not sure I don't know if you can see that um from the same shop i just i feel that i mean i have got actually quite a lot of stuff on my fay altar to be fair um which if you've ever watched my instagram feed you'll i've shown it before it's um and not a working altar as such it is a place where the fay um where i i give homage to the fray the fray <laughs> the fay. and uh yeah uh, it's where the Morrigan lives as well, but um, like it's not full already. But anyway, I didn't, there was a fairy in another shop that I absolutely fell in love with and it was quite stunning, but it was £400 and it's worth every penny. You can see all the work that goes into it. These are one-offs, they're handmade, they're absolutely exquisite. But I just couldn't justify it. I would have loved to have bought her, but I just did not have. Uh, I don't have the kind of money to throw away. Uh, not throw away. That's not the right word. But it wouldn't have been a justifiable purchase. I can't. I can't spend four hundred pounds. But I think this is so cute, and um, I think oh well, it'll stay with me. Um, and then one day I'm sure one of my grandchildren will go Ooh! and I'll, I'll probably allow them to uh, to take ownership at some point. But for now, I have an Ickle Pixie, which probably will stay on this altar for a little bit. I did also buy some um, more of this um, Wildberry. Uh, incense from the same shop I'm sorry I can't remember the name of it um, now my husband being totally organized collect because he he loves these and he obviously picked up the same you get like 10 in a in a you put 10 in a pack and um, I uh, he, he put the same fragrance in his each one so 10 of each me no i'm a lucky dip girl so i just picked up a bit of everything so uh i never really know what i'm going to get when i put light one because <laughs> i have no idea what they are but i sift them all before i put them in there and i love them so i did get some more incense now i also um went on a pilgrimage for my friend sandra who'd asked me um if i was able to when I went into the Sons of Asgard, get the Forest Witch Spray. Now, they didn't have any of the incense, which I know um, because of the way they create their products in spell work and, and magical workings, it is not readily available. Um, but they did have quite a few bottles of the Forest Witch Spray. And um, so they very kindly popped one aside for my lovely friend because she has a, another lovely friend going on Saturday who, who she's going to see before she sees me. So I asked if they'd put it aside for, for them to collect so that she gets one, which is lovely. Because uh, I think the last time she went, they didn't have any. And um, I'd never had the forest witch before, so I thought I'd get some. And I like the smell. 
Oh, actually, I won't spray it because I've got incense going, but it's really lovely. It's beautifully singy. I went to Star Child and I picked up some Gaia. Haven't had this one before, but my husband always picks up the um, Green Man. And my my personal altar space, my working altar space, which is where I film, where I do the um, spread cloths and where I work with tarot, is Gaia centric, it's goddess centric. Um, and my, my path is very much nature goddess centric. So I thought, oh, why don't I try some of these beautiful incenses from um, Star Child? I do love them. They are beautiful. And this one smells absolutely divine. I kind of wish that I'd picked up another one. You can order online. So there is that opportunity, but no doubt we'll go back. There was a couple of things that I ummed and ahmed. There was a lovely dress and a lovely cardigan that I really liked. There's quite a few more um, clothes shops there than there was before. And I nearly, nearly, nearly did pick it up and buy it. But one, I want to try making my own. And two, I do have an awful lot already of clothes. And until I can um, reduce my wardrobe, I didn't feel justified in buying anything else. Anyway, I also bought some candles. Now, I, I don't think these are unreasonably priced, um, but I will need to get some just uh, pillar candles. But I did... This is my first one of these. I've never bought one of these before. Um, but I, making um, my sacred space a working space and also having candles on my, my desk, um, I just felt that I needed something purely goddess based. I've had a couple of these before. Uh, and I, I love them. I absolutely love them. So I bought a couple more to keep me going until I go back because um, I love the colours, the fact that they're, you know, that they're just very, very beautiful. Um, and I didn't go mad. And I think that's the only problem is when I when I go, I kind of do get kind of it's a bit of overwhelm and overload a sensory overload of how much there is and what do I what can I buy what what do I need um and between trying to look at tarot and oracle and books books big book all the books and trying to remember to stock up on the you know the sort of supplies <laughs> I kind of get a bit lost if I'm honest um so but I did I did pick up a couple of those and that was for my daughter, a smudge, a sage smudge stick. So uh, I picked up one of those for her because I've, I've got a couple that I've, I've burnt in the past. Um, so that was that. And the only other things that I purchased was there's a shop again. I don't know the name, but it's got um, all those lovely sort of, I don't know if they're Turk Moroccan sort of those lovely sort of um, uh, lamps with all the different um, colours in sort of the, uh, really beautiful and they have lots of different incenses as well um, and I just picked up one of these little perfumes I, I thought it looked quite quite nice it smelt lovely it's just a roller a roller blade I mean I make my own for the most part but um, I just love the Moroccan rose so I thought I would indulge myself in one of those um, and last but no means least I did so I, I looked at all these books okay I went all through all the book, bookshops Happy Glastonbury has a really lovely selection of books back at the back of the shop with the tarot and um, the the speaking tree which has now changed its name and I can't remember but everybody else will remember um, and there's a couple of others other bookshops there and every shop I went into I looked at the books and the first thing I'd see was a book I owned that I hadn't read every time I went everywhere I went I'd look at a, oh I, I haven't read that yet but I know I've got it I haven't got it I've got it uh, there was one book I couldn't remember whether I had or not and I do need to see if I have it but I just thought, this is silly. I've got a list of books I want to buy, yet I haven't read half the books on my bookshelf. So I did the right thing. I didn't buy 
any more books except for one. So I already had uh, Avalon Within, had this for a long, long time, started it a long time ago, actually, but never really connected with it. Um, but I, I saw this in a couple of shops and there's another book, it's bigger still, of her, the author. Um, I don't know if that's correct. Jenna Tellendru, is it? I could be wrong. Um, but this book I found, I'm, and I'm sorry I keep calling it The Speaking Tree. I sometimes wonder why they change the names when people get to know these shops. Um, but anyway, it has changed its name. But um, uh, it was in there and it was marked as being a signed copy. And they had a few. And so I thought, oh, I'm a sucker for a signed book. <laughs> um, and I knew that I had this one, which is the first one. And you can, I mean, you can see this is the second one. And like I say, I think there's a third. There may be a fourth. I don't know. But um, I don't know if it even says. Probably not. I'm not sure. But anyway, I decided that I was going to purchase that. So that was all I did purchase and I've come away in the past with an with oodles of bags but I was really proud of myself that actually when I looked in these bookshops and it is overwhelmed because the extent of books that there are out there to purchase is astronomical it's crazy um, and of course they've all got these gorgeous covers so they, they're all very inviting and I really had to really say to myself, come on, look, you know, you've got this book and you haven't read it. So I didn't buy any other books. And also it's, it's it is hard. You know, you we still spent a lot of money by the time you include your petrol, your food and your purchases. We sp still spent a lot of money. It was our wedding anniversary and we were good and we didn't. My husband bought a couple of Win Abbott um, incense bowl things, um, bless him, but we and some incense. But we were really good. We didn't we didn't go mad. But but even then, you're still looking, um, you know, at a lot of money. So um, it's it's hard because some of these books you probably could get cheaper as well. What I like about them and I, I know this to be a fact, is I am I could be wrong, because I'm never sure, but I have a feeling I bought this off the internet, but I could be wrong, because we did buy a few books many years ago, and this might have been one of them, but usually if I buy something from Glastonbury, I immediately remember buying it, whether it's a mug, like my husband's Chaliswell mug, or you know, we bought our Guyan statue. It was our first. This one stays is with me. She's the original, original Guyan statue. And um, she was bought in Glastonbury. So you kind of associate, don't you, with things that are gifted or that you've bought in special places. And I genuinely can't remember with this one, but I think I got it off the internet. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So this deck, um, The Beautiful Creatures, is the second edition and it's been around forever. Of course it has because I'm always late to the party. And I, I had a hankering to get um, some more of the, the big eyed um, decks. Now you either love them or you hate them, that's for sure. But look at the edges of this deck. Oh man, I love that. I absolutely love that. I do not like the split box. I think that is a really poor choice. But then, I mean, people do keep these on their shelves. So I really don't know why um, they would do that. But this, albeit a second edition, may very well still be quite old because this deck has been around a long time and they had this for sale it was it was weird because i'd seen it last time really wanted it decided not to get any more um and 
thought, oh, well, when I go back this time, because it's been a long time since we went, I thought, oh, uh, you know, if, it, if they've got it, I'll, I'll get it. I didn't see it anywhere else. These are the miners. Um, and look, I, at first I thought they didn't have it. So um, I thought I was going to get unlucky and not be able to get it. I mean, you can get it on it on Amazon. You can get it uh online from other stockists and it's it's still cheaper than i bought it for but this was in the sale and it was it looked like their last copy but, but anyway um so the, I, I started reading the book in the car which was quite nice and um the there's a few different spreads in here and then you get into the cards and we all know the artwork is um, by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. J.R. Rivera has another deck out. And I can't remember what it is. Which is weird because I should know. And you'll all be telling me. Because you'll all know. But when I was reading this, I don't remember. Um, oh, look, it's got bits in the back. Um... I don't remember, where does it talk about the author? Hmm, I'm not sure I... There's a foreword by Barbara Moore. There must be. There must be a bit that talks about her. I loved that. I thought that was really nice. That talks about her, um, her other... I know I've got another deck with her, but I have got a menopause brain. So feel free to, to let me know which one other deck I am I should be thinking of, because I can't remember. Anyway, um, I just wanted to have a quick look at these with you before I finish, only because I want to play with it and I'm not putting it back into order. Um, so these cards, apart from having this absolutely glorious edge, I like absolutely love already um we've got a little keyword at the bottom of these let's come down a bit let's come down a bit because we want to give this some love don't we well i do i feel at the moment now it, it could be part because i've had a few days off and i wanted to spend that time uh doing other things <laughs> literally i've got the garden it was supposed to be absolutely torrential rain today and it's sunny <laughs> so there we go but anyway um excuse me but i am trying to slurp my coffee sorry sandra if you watch this but anyway um yeah i i've got a few things going on but i'm kind of in in the processes of putting my, together an alice down the rabbit hole spread cloth and I've been saying for a while that I wanted to get a fey cloth um, done and I felt that I needed that inspiration of perhaps um, the fey decks which I've kind of got out for spring don't know why we associate fey with spring but that does seem to be a thing um, and these will help me as well I think because you know she's got her little I mean, look at these wings, the colours in those. Um, they're magical. I, I love this deck already and I, I didn't, I don't know, it's been tinkering around in the back of my mind for a while. And I think I've got the Les Vampire and I've got the... Um, fairy fairy tales one i think that's all i've got um and i'm i'm just already loving the fact that look she's got a little bit of zapping going on she's cute wow look at our high priestess inner wisdom uh, there's a a very uh, There's a lot going on in this face. Um, 
and weirdly enough this actually does remind me almost of um that journey to avalon that that med medieval sort of arthurian mists of avalon feeling um and i did actually start reading the avalon within again uh this morning so that i could actually really uh immerse myself so I've kind of got this Alice in Wonderland, this fairy and this sort of medieval sort of Avalon thing going on. Um, the Empress. There's um, there's a lot of sadness coming through um, with the eyes being full of tears and, and watery. Um, and it does, you know, it, it does, this deck is, is, is beautiful, but it isn't, it is set to challenge you. It is set to help you to um, connect with your feelings or, or things in your life or, you know, it's not just sugar coat. It, it's there to help you, um, how you react to the images, how you perceive the images, you know, um, and we have, a, you know, a female empress here for sovereignty. I mean, everything is often governed by the eyes, isn't it? How how we see the eyes uh, tells us a lot about the actual um, expression of the face. And, and you know, Jasmine's artwork is is very distinct. I love this hierophant. I would definitely have chosen that hierophant when I did my my tag for Masha. The lovers. Interesting card. I'm really. I haven't ever watched a walkthrough of this deck. I've watched bits of it, and. Because I think your first impressions are really important. This is a really lovely chariot. I'm in a chariot year. I don't feel like I'm in a chariot year. I feel I am very much stagnant at the moment in physicality. Um, and that's uh, interesting because it's challenging me. But um, we can be in a chariot um, energy in lots of different ways and I think inwardly on my spiritual journey my chariot may well be the the vessel that helps me to navigate my way to Avalon or although I've done some shadow work in the past that I feel has opened that way up um, I think it is co a constant ongoing anyway um, and maybe that's that's where the movement is actually in my spiritual journey. Let's go a bit, little bit quicker because otherwise I'm going to make this video too long. Uh, fortitude, oh, I love that. Oh, with all the arms, of Ky is it the the Kylie, um, the hermit? These are the images that, that transport me back to um, nature, to being in the woods, being in apple orchards. And I love the dragon. I love, you know, we don't have the wheel. These are, are people. These are car characters. These, you know, so the, the wheel is depicted very differently in here. The, the justice equality the hanging one perception oh look this is alice isn't it that's the other one i don't have and i'm tempted and i didn't see it actually um i'm tempted to see about getting the alice i think it's an oracle isn't it the transformation transition her artwork for this deck is really quite exceptional <laughs> for temperance i am absolutely on board with a bubbly let's have a bit of bolly the habit oh that's a very challenging card the decadence
the star. The moon, concealment for the moon and the sun. I love this. Very, it's very Indian, isn't it? With the, um, I don't, I can see the word and I can't seem to pronounce it. Oh, I don't know why I bother trying to be even remotely intellectual. I'm not. The judgment. Fascinating, look. That's very interesting. With the paintbrush here. And the world. So now we're on to the ones you can see. I mean, I've never, I've obviously not used this, but it has a slight um, bit on the edge. But again, I love the cards. I love the size. I love the feel. And now we're into ones energy. The two of ones. Decisions. Patience, interesting enough, for the three of ones. how much these cards and in fact it does actually say to be fair that they they are not um rws they are loosely based on rws but i think that the, the this deck specifically is very much more about um being not it's necessarily its own system but its own messages now I think this deck would work really well with the Nicoletta Giacoli. Um, I have mine for inner child work and um, oh, nine of wands. Yeah. Hardship. So I would be interested, I think, to know more about how they came together the artist and the creator because the artist takes her uh imagination if you like from if she's the instruction of the creator so i would be really interested to know how they their conversations came about to create for um for the artist um you know for jasmine to be able to based on what um has been has been described to her i mean it might be for all i know that she she gave her the key words and said do your own thing i don't i don't know I don't know what the actual books say, so I might quickly finish with um, Seven of Cups Delusions. That's a nice one. Eight of Cups A Quest. Again, that's a nice one. You've not got your RWS image here. Um, and if you're an RWS person, that might be challenging for you. But I think that the way ahead would be to not look perhaps at these as um following the rws path because it does it does say that that is not the case now up until now we haven't got any court cards because she changed them and i don't know if they were changed in the second edition and not the first or whether it was in both so we're going with the flow here guys i'm loving this um intellect for the the, the ace of swords look at the eye in there Two of Swords. Well, it's at least enough of a difference. Defeat. Five of Swords. She's painting the roses. It's Alice again. There's a strong Alice theme, which is perfect for me because that is one of the... Um, spread cloths i'm trying to create as i said so it it helps me to 
initiate some kind of ideas. I love that Ten of Swords, that's a beauty. I think they're all, I, I love these cards. These little people are so beautiful. I'm surprised they haven't created them in in porcelain or something. Um, pro, uh, I'm not sure about that one, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Read. Don't see it as, as greed, but I again, you have to go with the deck in its own right so you're not it, you I wonder if it wouldn't have been better to take out the standard um titles um but anyway then I suppose it becomes an oracle deck but yeah F poverty back to Alice again Eight of Pentacles practice. Love that. Another Alice. Um, so here we have the Queen of Wands. Now, I, like I say, I've only just got this out. Oh, this is odd. Let's move these out of the way for a minute. Queen of Wands. King of Pentacles. Knight of Swords. Hold on. Okay. I'm running out of room. Hold on. You will all know this deck really well, but I don't. So, um, Queen of Cups. So now I have the King of Wands. The Knight of Pentacles. The Queen of Swords. And the King of Cups. Oh, there's a face. The Knight of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles, the King of Swords, and the Knight of Cups. Page of Wands, Page of Pentacles, Page of Swords, Page of Cups. So, yeah. So we have the courts, but I, I think there's astrological as associations with these. Um, Page of Wands, the Knight, Desire, Leadership for the King and the Queen is Determination. But I think they're, they're based on the astrological, but I haven't had a chance to read the whole book. So Page, Knight... Queen and King, a Page of Swords, Knight of Swords, Queen of Swords. And there we have, I think that's the association. So you're getting the astrological association with that. Yeah, I think that's right. And again with the kit, with, oh, I've got down the wrong way. Silly me. So Knight, beg your pardon. Losing track of myself. Page, Knight, Queen, and King. And there's a couple of extra cards. The Paranormal, Curiosity, and You Are One, Authenticity. And if I put them on the right way. And there's the backs. Okay, so that is my Glastonbury goodies and a very quick walkthrough of the beautiful Creatures Tarot. Thank you if you've watched to the end. Don't forget we've got a live tomorrow. Um, fr not tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Friday the 5th of April 24, in case you're watching this at another time and place. Um, yeah, with the lovely Sandra. Thanks for watching. Bye.